Hey everyone, I'm out here in the garage and what we're going to be doing today is replacing the blower motor in our 45 year old furnace. So stay tuned. So if you're new to the channel, I just want to welcome you here and hopefully you'll consider subscribing if you like what you see. Also check out DIY Apprentice on Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. I post lots of pictures and videos on those platforms before I post anything on YouTube and occasionally I'll post things on those platforms I don't post on YouTube. Also check out the website at DIYApprentice.com and don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video. So real quick I've been having some trouble with my right eye so hopefully that doesn't creep you out too much uh, but what we're going to be doing today is uh, recently we had some trouble with our furnace which is right over here and it is 45 years old so original to the house. Now what happened is that the blower motor started acting up on us. It was making a really loud squealing noise. We also got a little bit of burning smell inside the house. And of course it decided to do this right before the winter. And so we were without heat for a few days, which wasn't too big a deal. We got through it just fine. So we're going to jump on that, get the blower motor replaced in this video. So let's get into it. All right, so this is our 45-year-old pain furnace that we'll most likely be looking to replace in the next couple years. And surprisingly, in the last 22 years we've lived in this house, we've only had to replace a pilot in this furnace. Now, the furnace we're dealing with here is a downflow model, where the air is blown downward past the heat exchanger and into the ducting in the crawl space. So the blower is mounted at the top of the cabinet instead of being mounted at the bottom of the cabinet, as in the case of an upflow furnace. We'll start by turning off the power at this switch and to feel more secure just in case the switch is accidentally flipped on it's a good idea to turn off the breaker at the electrical panel. I'm going to disassemble the furnace to access the blower. Since this furnace has most likely been opened many times there are some missing fasteners. Before I forget, since the flue pipe is disconnected, I should also turn off the gas in the pilot. Here is the blower housing, and it's common for a capacitor attached to the side of the housing in more modern furnaces to fail, causing the motor to malfunction. This old furnace doesn't have one. While I was in here previously checking out the blower motor, I cleaned the internals of the furnace because it was very filthy. I'll admit that I haven't really done a good job maintaining it. I scrubbed off quite a bit of soot and surface rust from the heat exchanger using this nylon brush I found at a local hardware store. I believe it's used to clean clothes dryer exhaust duct. I couldn't find a proper furnace brush in the stores and I didn't have time to wait for one to be shipped. I also removed the burners and cleaned them with a wire brush and steel wool, then I blew them out with compressed air. They're actually still in pretty good shape. Alright, let's continue on with the blower. 
I separated the electrical connector, removed the screws that secure the housing to the cabinet, then I pulled the housing out of the cabinet. With the blower on the bench, I loosen the set screw that holds the wheel onto the motor shaft with a wrench. I then remove the screw that secures the wires to the housing and the three bolts that attach the blower to the housing. Next, I slid the motor out of the housing. A little grease applied to the shaft may help with the removal and the installation. I then use a ratchet and a socket to loosen and remove the belly band from the motor. Okay, here's the part number for this Westinghouse motor. It's 319P877. I decided to buy a used replacement since this furnace may not be with us much longer. Fortunately, this was a very popular motor and there were quite a few suitable replacements. I ended up buying this Packard 40852 motor on eBay for $50. I cut the wire harness off the Westinghouse motor to transfer it over to the Packard. I only needed to wire up the white common, green ground, and the red low speed wires since this furnace only runs at one speed. But I figured I'd just go ahead and wire them all up. I cut off around an inch of sheathing from each wire. And by the way, the wire from the Westinghouse motor looks like aluminum, but it's actually coated copper. I scraped off some of the coating with a utility knife to confirm. I proceeded to cut about 2 inches of heat shrink tubing to cover the joint for each wire I was going to solder and slid it onto the first wire and away from the joint. I formed an X with the first wires made from the connector and proceeded to twist and solder them together with lead free solder. Wire nuts or something like Wago lever nuts would work just fine. I also cut the motor's threaded studs down a little to make sure it fit on the blower wheel. With the wiring complete, I put the belly band back on the blower motor, then slid the motor onto the blower wheel and attached it to the housing.
I then center the blower wheel in the housing and tighten the set screw on the flat side of the motor shaft. The last thing to do before reinstalling the blower in the furnace cabinet was to attach the ground wire. No ground was included on the Westinghouse motor. I sanded off some of the coating in a small area to expose bare metal and I had to add a washer under the screw's head because the screw bottomed out and just spun freely on the thin sheet metal. Now that the blower was reassembled, I slid the housing back into the furnace cabinet and reattach the base with sheet metal screws. I then reconnected the harness. Next, I reinstalled the panels in the flue. I then turned on the gas and reignited the pilot. And lastly, I restored power to the furnace by turning on the breaker at the electrical panel and flipping on the switch of the furnace. Alright, so it looks like the motor's running great, and the flame is now more blue than it was before, which is perfect. Alright, so there you have it. There's a place in the blower motor on our furnace. Not too big a deal at all. It's really pretty simple to do that. Uh, so hopefully this information was helpful, and thanks for watching.